So in this section, we're going to be setting up our Z tools or our planes, our tiling texture planes that we're going to be sculpting on top of in ZBrush. And what we're going to be creating here is a specific plane that's going to allow us to sculpt our brush across from one side to the other with perfect tiling seams and textures so that way when we export our model and bake it down it will have a lot less cleanup work inside of Photoshop or Substance or whichever texturing program you're going to be using. You may have seen this technique before. I actually learned it from a coworker, Brad Smith. He's got some great tutorials and some great YouTube videos on ZBrush on his website, hybrid. 3D.com, so be sure to check that out when you get a chance. Alright, so we're going to get started, and I'm using Maya for, for my 3D program, but you can really use any 3D program you choose. It's totally up to you. But so, what we're going to start off doing here is creating a plane, and my plane is going to have 10 subdivisions in both the width and the height. And what I also want to make sure is I'm going to check my, my grid settings here. So if I go to my grid options, I'm using centimeters, so Maya centimeters, and my grid's 1,000 units in all directions, and there's a grid line every 100 units. So every 100 centimeters, there's a grid line. And the reason I use this is that when I'm making assets or making objects for the Unreal Engine, one meter in the Unreal Engine is 100 units or 100 centimeters. And so I just usually stick to the same layout and the same grid options for most everything I do just so I don't get confused and I know what my proper scale is and what everything should be look like like relative to each other. Alright so I have my plane and I have my grid set up and now I'm gonna make the width of my plane 200 units by 200 units and so this is 2 meters by 2 meters. Now what I'm gonna do is check my UV editor and I just have it on my custom shelf up here but if you need to know where that's at just go to Windows and UV editor is right here. So this tiles perfectly all along the edge of my grid here. So if it was like off like this or if it was scaled improperly then just make sure that all your edges line up right along this this UV grid here. That's very important because when we are baking this needs to tile on all, all directions, all sides. It's also important for our Z brushes so that when we're sculpting on top of this mesh it's going to tile directly on top of itself and, and work properly. So this is going to be our bake plane and also the plane that we're going to use to frame our scene with in ZBrush. So after we have this we're going to actually duplicate it down like so and it's just going to be a little bit below the surface. Pretty much give it some space because you'll be sculpting on top of this plane above it and we don't want to be sculpting so far down that we're clipping through this plane below us here. And the reason we're going to do this is we actually want some more space on this plane to sculpt onto because what will happen is when you're sculpting in ZBrush if I'm sculpting on this edge a lot here, it's going to start to push these sides in and out a little, bit, a little bit and we'll actually lose our tiling that we want on the texture. So we're actually going to build up some borders around the sides here. And to do that, we're going to go ahead and select all the faces and hold W down, which is W is your move tool shortcut, so if you hold it down and then hold down left click we have all of our options for the move tool right here and we're gonna make sure preserve UVs is turned on so now we'll keep the UV editor open so you can see what this does 
and we're actually going to duplicate the faces which is under edit mesh duplicate and we're going to use the options box here and make sure separate duplicated faces is unchecked so we'll go ahead and apply this and it's going to duplicate our mesh but it's still part of the same object so it's still within itself. Uh, this is all one object. When I select it, it selects both planes still. And this is a separate plane, and we want to keep these together here. So I'm going to select this this left plane here again, and just hold X and snap it so that it's going to tile right along the edge here. And you'll see because we had preserve UVs on, it actually moved the UV seam right along the edge there. So now it's perfectly lined up with our other UV plane right along the side. And so we're going to keep grabbing this center plane here and just press G. Uh, I may have to do it again actually because I used another tool. But so if we if we duplicate this again and snap it then it's going to continue to do that. It's going to move the UVs exactly where they need to go so that it's going to look exactly like our objects over there. And I'm going to keep grabbing the center one because uh, so now I'm going to press G and actually it should, yeah, now, so now it what G does is it, redo, it redoes the last tool that you used in Maya which was our duplicate face tool. And the reason I keep grabbing this original plane here is because it's kind of like uh, VHS tapes. If I keep moving and duplicating the last plane that I had selected, our UVs, because we have preserve UVs on, will slowly deteriorate and they will not line up properly. They won't quite look as good because preserve UVs doesn't do a perfect job in duplicating the asset and moving it and preserving it and it'll slowly start to move off the grid. So if we grab the original plane every time, then we can ensure that we're getting the best preserve UVs out of our out of our object here. So I'm going to press G and just finish this up and basically just duplicate this around until I have the whole plane surrounded. All right. Only a few more to go. So this may take a while the first time you do it, but it's the only time you have to do it. So it's like, you know, you do it once and you can just move on with your life, just forget you ever did this, and just put it in the past. Alright, so now we have our whole plane, and we can check our UVs, and they're all tiling perfectly. So we have our one main one in the center here that lines up with our texture and then all the other ones duplicated around it like this. So what we're going to do now actually is we're going to merge all these vertices here. So merge vertices um, and how I got to that menu actually is if you select all the vertices and hold shift and then right click and hold and you can see you have all these options here so we can merge vertices just like that really quick and easy so now when we select this it's all one object and that's what we were going for but this is way too much information when we're sculpting inside of ZBrush like I said we only want a small boundary around our plane so that the tiling works properly so we're actually going to select a lot of these edges here that we don't really need. Let's actually just do it inside of the UV editor. It'll be a lot easier to, to do it this way. So we'll select this center plane uh, with the face options turned on. And then we're going to expand our selection by holding shift. So hold shift and then the the greater than less than keys on your keyboard which is also the period and the comma we're going to use the greater than option and we're going to go out about three faces from our center plane here so one more time 
and we're about three faces out. And that should be enough of a border for us to tile our sculpt properly. So now we're going to go to edit and we're going to, or sorry, we're going to go to select and we're going to invert our selection. So inverse and now it selects all those other faces we don't need and we're just going to delete them. So here we have our tiling texture plane. This is what we're going to sculpt onto. But we're not quite done yet. We have one last step because what we want out of this is we want the interior most section of our plane to be denser with polygons than the exterior section. And that's because uh, that way we can get a much higher detail sculpt out of the, the part of the texture that we actually need the detail out of. And this outer area here, we don't really need uh, the detail out there because we're not going to be baking that onto our plane here. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to go and select our main faces here in the UV editor. And we're going to actually increase our selection by one because we want this single border here to be just as, as dense because, uh, like I said, sometimes the border moves in and out of our bake plane and we want that to, to look nice and detailed on there too. So we'll shift greater than and increase our selection. So now it just barely goes out of that UV plane. And we're going to, uh, in Maya 2016, there's something called Add Divisions. So we're going to go to Edit Mesh and Add Divisions. And so it adds them just to these faces we had selected here. We're going to do that uh, one more time, but we're going to expand our selection as we continue to do it. So I did it this first time. Now I expand my selection, and I'll do it again. Now I'll expand my selection and press G and do it one more time. And so now we have a nice dense interior like this where we're going to be sculpting and it slowly fades off as it gets to the edge of the plane. So perfect. This is going to be our bake plane for tiling textures and we're going to use this for the rest of our lives when we're old retired men. And the way we're going to export this now is we're going to select our bottom bake plane here and we're going to export these two things separately. So we'll go to File Export Selection Options and change it to OBJ. So it's going to be an OBJ export. Um, and don't worry too much about this stuff. I usually turn materials off because I don't want that to export. I don't have any materials applied to here. Normals, groups, you can leave the rest on. That's fine. And so now we'll just export this to the desktop again. And I'll just make a new folder. Uh, tiling texture plane. Alright, you'll probably want to save this to a better location because you can actually use this, like I said, for the rest of your sculpts forever. And so you might want to save it to some place that you have that's a little bit more organized and not on your desktop. But that's just me. I don't like my desktop to be all cluttered. Uh, okay, so we're going to name this bake plane, uh, tiling texture. And we're going to go into our folder here and just save the OBJ. And then here we go, we're going to export the, the sculpting plane too. So we'll go file, export selection, and we already did the options box, so we don't need to do that again. And this is going to be sculpting plane. tiling texture. Alright, cool. And so let's just check our UVs again, make sure everything looks good. Yep, looks good. Yep, looks good. And we can move on. You can save this scene if you want to, but you don't really have to. It's no problem. I'm not going to get mad at you for it.